performative inclusivity to me, I think I had a, a, a woman that worked at my school, Columbia, who, uh, thank you, and she used to have a word for, she, called, she would call them graham crackers. And I was like, what is a graham cracker? It's a cracker that's brown. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I'm... Pause. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. I just, my soul needs to catch up. Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. I don't know. Sometimes I feel like even when the people look like you, they're not necessarily, they, they like, first of all, Oscar's so white, me too, diversity and inclusion. Very often the same people who are keeping you out of the business for most of their careers have now been tasked with letting you in the door all of a sudden, right? And that kind of trickles down to where you sometimes have an executive culture where it can be people of color, but they understand that they're only there to kind of be, you know, the catalog to the college, so to speak, right? But they're not necessarily coming into their jobs with any sort of revolutionary spirit. So what ends up happening is they become the voice boxes for problematic white people. And it's designed that way. And you have to navigate it and you have to maintain your cool and you can't, Sometimes it's very hard to call it out. I normally wouldn't even call it out, but since we're here talking, I feel like that's what performative inclusion looks like to me. You know, it's like getting a bunch of black and brown people to do white supremacist things. <laughs>